All right, so we got ourselves into the Guilty Gear lore. We did the shorter video. I think it was like 14 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. But it had mm -hmm. to skip over a lot of important details. Clearly, however, uh, with considering how well that video did, you guys wanted us to check out this series by Wooly Versus, the Heaven or Hell series, which yeah. is a much deeper dive into the Guilty Gear timeline and lore. I'm excited because I like I've played a bunch of Zerd and Strive, but I'm I'm not extremely knowledgeable in the entire story. So yeah, I'm excited too. Yeah. We'll see if you recognize anything or if there's going to be some <laughs> aha moments. Like, ah, mm -hmm. that's why Jacko <laughs> does the pose. Yeah. It all makes sense. <laughs> that's what I'm here for, is to figure out why Jacko does the pose. You know what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm clearly here for lore reasons, not for that either. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. But, yeah, make sure to go and support the OG series. Link to that at the top of the description, as always. And let's get right into it. <laughs> Guilty Gear is a badass, beloved fighting game series that's been keeping it metal right. since 1998. <laughs> the gameplay, music, characters, and oh. album cover stages are blazing with style that can be best described as... Baby, does it? Over yeah. the years, yeah. each new game I gives a glimpse into its world. But if you're like yeah. me, at some point you probably had this moment. This is the coolest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's what I was thinking when uh, we initially looked at it. It was like, oh my god. The animation yeah. and just the over-the-top <laughs> nature of everything. It's like, it knows exactly yes. what it is, and it's not ashamed to be cool. And I love yeah. that. Oh yeah, it just... It chose a theme and it just said, I'm going to double down and make this the coolest shit you've ever watched. <laughs> mm -hmm. No idea what's going on. <laughs> nope, it's not just you. <laughs> With the newest game, Guilty Gear Strive, just around the corner, the desire to catch up on the lore before the next chapter begins is real. There is a crazy amount of things happening in this story, in so many bits and pieces, spread across a collection of endings, manga, light novels, drama CDs, and yes, even pachinko machines, <laughs> that it's an almost unreasonable task to put the pieces together. Almost. <laughs> I finally finished. I've done the legwork, and I found that one untranslated overture art book page containing that short story with the one important detail so that you don't have to. <laughs> I put all my findings together into this timeline of events, double-checked it with the lore masters, and triple-checked it with that man himself. But before that we man? strive oh, to understand revelations, <laughs> signs, accent cores, midnight carnivals, and the missing links by your side, we first have to understand how the world came to an end. Welcome to Heaven or Hell. <laughs> Get ready, Get ready to, rock. to rock. All right. Ooh. Before the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. Mankind has succeeded in achieving the dream of a natural, limitless energy supply. It was the dawn of the age of magic. It was the end of history. Twelve. The end of history AD, doesn't sound like a good thing. The end of the Fifth Crusade <laughs> of the Holy Roman Empire. An army of crusaders is massacred after failing to take Jerusalem. One what? night crusades almost escaped. Is such a wild concept. <laughs> well, it once again digs into that aspect of, you know, you don't have to be crazy to do horrific acts of violence. You just have to believe that you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I see. We're going all the way back to here. I <laughs> yeah. gotcha. Apes on horseback. The deep decks lore. and killed with a volley of arrows, awakening suddenly in a mysterious cage of mirrors and birds of prey. His body is pierced endlessly huh? until he experiences the maximum human pain threshold before blacking out. The knight reawakens in the world of the living, reborn yeah. in a pool of his own blood, rejected oh. by Valhalla. He finds that he can no longer age Damn. and no longer die. 1945 AD. Oh, well, that's a big time jump. After okay. World War II, the United Nations is founded. 
1956 AD, the International Police Force is founded. 1998 AD, a descendant of vampire lineage named Slayer oh. exists uh. in this world as the last of his kind. He creates a secret society known as the Assassin's Syndicate. Its primary goal is to punish those outside of the law and to maintain social order by removal of corrupt leaders. Wait. So you're saying that he's actually Batman? <laughs> he, he's an actual Batman. <laughs> I, I thought he was one of those like fabulous like evil characters, but uh, no, no, he's a vigilante. Okay. They he's a live Batman by a that slays. Oh shit! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no kidding! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no! Wait, is this VA actually Dio? Or do we dub this? <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure no, this is Dill. Wait, no. It, is it? Because it's not Slayer speaking right now. DAs. Okay, who is it? And he's had uh, Iemasa Kayumi and Takayahashi. Hmm. Uh, what about other dude, Shadow Demon guy? I forgot his name already. Dozato. Yeah, I think he's no. the one talking right now. He's voiced by Matt Mercer. Of uh, course. Takehito. Koyasu. Oh, it is Dio. This isn't the voiceover. This is actually <laughs> just Dio. But he's not the vampire here. He's the shadow demon guy. Whoa. Oh, no. Ooh. Everything's twisted inside out. <laughs> what? Dandyism? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay. AD, the dawn of revival. On December 31st at midnight, there was concern that a Y2K bug would lead to problems with old computers. What yeah. wasn't expected, however, was all technology suddenly becoming erratic for hours, followed by an unknown entity attempting to manifest itself into reality. What was being birthed at this time is unclear, but all of humanity felt the coming of a divine will. Before this god could manifest, however, it suddenly and inexplicably stopped. Stricken with an innate fear that this was a near extinction event, humanity would never trust in technology again. With this sudden technophobia. That's valid. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I understand why. Actually, wasn't there an incident recently with like a bunch of Windows computers kind of going haywire and like so many things not being able to function? So many flights canceled? Uh, yeah, that was due to a coding error. <laughs> yeah, it was some sort of coding error in a security program that's on like the business window yeah. computers. Jeez. It affected my work. You can imagine. It came the decline of, of civilization. Yeah. Yeah. In its darkest hour, mankind was saved by... The arrival of the apostles. Oh, Emerging these guys. from parts unknown, five powerful mages arrive and bring hope in the form of knowledge. Humanity is introduced to the concept of magic, a limitless, clean source of energy Sounds that can be used to replace Definitely. old reliance on technology. The apostles spend a decade teaching the ways of replace magic to all one, <laughs> one reliance for another. Oh, it sounds like a good plan. <laughs> I feel like this is a, a very common theme, though, in quite a few games. Because like, even in a, the new yeah. Doom, they're like, okay, we're running out of fossil fuels, so why don't we use this dank, clean energy from hell? And everybody's like, good job, <laughs> good idea. Yeah, this will definitely sounds work. Sounds great, yeah. <laughs> no problems could arise here. Yeah, we just gotta <laughs> sacrifice a few people and summon demons. Yeah, nothing will go wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Through their established organization, the Sanctus Maximus Populi. Oh, this gotta have that cool global name. authority helps establish magic yeah. infrastructure across the whole world and introduces the magic particle theory, or mana, to the sciences. The structure of magic can be assessed, researched, 
and practically applied to fuel everyday life. We have numbers for the old noses. way of life can not only be resumed, <laughs> but surpassed, and thus begins the Age of Magic. The UN formally declares that magic is the new standard and hereby bans all analog technology from being used, labeling Dang. it black technology. <laughs> oh, what? Why, why has it got to be black? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, <dear. laughs> oh, but okay. Well, rest in peace, all analog horror enjoyers. It's it's all gone now. <laughs> I, I never liked analog horror anyway. Dang. But yeah, as you said, like, you could already see where this is going, even if we didn't have the prior <laughs> knowledge of the Guilty Gear lore. It's like, one dependency for another. Mm -hmm. It totally won't go wrong. It never does. Yeah, no. A concentrated effort all the to dismantle the sure. remnants yeah. of old machinery and computers begins under the authority of the International Police Force. Not all nations are in compliance with the black tech contraband, however, as China initially rejects, but later oh. joins. India, oh. on the other hand, remains in disagreement <laughs> and partially withdraws from the UN. The theory of magical science. <laughs> the contradiction yes. is real, but uh, uh, regardless. I always like fiction that treat magic as a science. That's usually my favorite way to address magic, to be honest. I I can agree. It has been a while since I've read a series like that, but you know, a writer mm -hmm. trying to explain it scientifically, <laughs> something that is inherently not scientific is just an interesting concept. When you have a, a magic system that follows very strict rules and has like an explanation that's equivalent to like learning and understanding science, I always mm -hmm. feel like it's so grounded and I really enjoy it. It eliminates that potential for a absolute bs scene where the main character mm -hmm. randomly gets a superpower that they never showed before and eliminates all tension <laughs> and removes yeah. all stakes it it, it kind of makes it harder to just fall into that writing deus ex machina like yeah well i don't know how to get my hero out of this corner but hey they've got magic <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> as the scientific method can be applied to magical phenomena it the continued like study of its nature you can leads have, to a like, breakdown a of magic structured rule set that you can work within oh yeah for sure and you don't have to just guess what the author will do next you actually have rules that you mm -hmm. can follow six known types mm -hmm. fire lightning wind water light and key most human beings are no capable dark. of using at least one type. Key magic is notable in particular, as it is raw energy powered by the spirit of the individual. Though it is the basis for all other types, key is the Check least out. understood and most difficult to use. Ultimately, the research hmm. of the apostles results in provision of 660 spells. What's harder spells to understand if... than yourself? Mm, true, true. For human <laughs> use, six are deemed unfit and are thus forbidden mm. with their six 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 uh -huh. now i see what you're getting at <laughs> i see you Four done, the apostles take on a less active role Iruma? by forming an advisory group <laughs> known as the conclave eventually they're no longer seen or heard from in society 2014 ad the gear project begins Originally called the Ecosystem Evolution Project, a group of scientists in a certain... You know, Gear Project rolls off the tongue a lot easier. Yeah, I agree with the name yeah. change. Country under Vince McDonnell begin top secret research Vince into genetically McDonald. altering McDonald. and evolving humans on a cellular level, <laughs> using the theory of magical science to fuse magic with DNA. It is theorized... Oh my god, it's Shikara all I over again. Magical DNA, that sounds badass. It, it, I just it have kinda, regular born DNA. Well, it does, but I also feel like it would send you down a, an endless spiral of being the main character of a tragedy. So, I, I don't know. That, okay, but but magic DNA sounds cool. Well, if you can accept that trade-off, then go for it, Servi. <laughs> I support you in whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but through this method, mankind can I advance to new heights. <laughs> Though the country is not explicitly named, it is heavily implied to be the U.S. Moving forward... <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Three notable scientists are involved with the project. There Frederick they are. Bosara, Aria Hale, and that man. That the three man. met in college and became best friends, <laughs> sometimes discussing mm -hmm. philosophy. Frederick and Aria yeah, as you love. do. 
though he was originally assigned to yeah. research a powerful spell known as Saint Oratorio. Frederick was instead transferred. Okay, well, we do know how this story goes, but I just realized it's kind of romantic in a way. Like, you know, you, you shipped your two friends so much that you made them live eternally so that the OTP <laughs> lasts forever, kind of? Yeah. You see, I, I had the thought, though, it's like <laughs> the opposite of Danny Phantom. <laughs> 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 you know, you have Danny's parents and Vlad Masters, and he's so fucking jealous of Danny's death that he ends up turning himself deadly into a ghost. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> to the Gear Project. 2015 AD. The development of Gear Cell Theory is complete. That man submits his findings to the US government under the conditions that one, all data must be used peacefully and must not be weaponized. Two, all staff yeah. must of have course, their well-being yeah. guaranteed. Oh, and three, these conditions must be made known to the public to assure continuing government compliance. 2016 AD, Arya reveals that she's been diagnosed with an incurable illness two years prior. Her case is known as a TP infection and is terminal. Frederick and that man divert all attention to finding a cure or a way to preserve her until one is found. But Arya has accepted her fate and stops them. She wants to- TP? It's probably something to do with teleporting randomly. Mm -hmm. Horrible, horrible condition. I don't know exactly if this is ever clarified. <laughs> I feel like maybe it's just like <laughs> initials and then like deadly infection and then we'll just go with that i like the idea of it being te like teleporting though because then if it's terminal because you just one day you could just teleport into a wall and that's the end she wants to live out her remaining days with frederick he continues searching for the cure but ultimately fails 2016 AD. It's far less buff the here. first gear is created as the project begins to show progress, numerous countries develop an interest in the project's potential results and begin contributing towards its funding. After promising results are seen on animals, the first major human clinical trial begins. Fusing stabilized gear cells with human cells, a new life form called a gear is created. It is later learned that the first human gear test subject was in fact Frederick and that the process was carried out by that man. Upon his awakening, the entire facility is destroyed and the subject escapes. This results in the gear project being shut down, with all files being classified A+. All involved personnel disappear. Shortly after, Frederick invents a gear cell suppressor device, allowing him to seal his true gear form. He develops it into a- Oh, so that's what we saw in the the expert supers when he releases like his the crazy demon looking form yeah yeah that's his gear form okay a headband that mm -hmm. he can wear at all times allowing and him that's that then we have a lore reason for the <laughs> headband yeah <laughs> it's not just cool Perfect. anime look to appear here <laughs> 2026 ad India completes secret construction on an Ultra Dreadnought class airship. In rejection of the Sanctus Maximus Populi, all those who embrace and preserve technology board the ship and formally declare their independence. Thus, mm. the Imperial Empire of Zep is formed, but it is done on the backs of a slave underclass. Uh, well, so, yeah, obvious. Uh, of course. Uh, Why wouldn't it be? To AD. Yeah. The Gear Project revived. With the U.S. economy and political influence in steep decline, the government decides to revisit the GEAR project, but this time expressly for military purposes. Hmm. 2045 That'll work, yeah. go well. That man rejoins the project <laughs> under an it alias. Does. The newly revived project quickly tries to produce a GEAR as a viable bioweapon. This fails due to an inability to control the GEAR life form. Yeah. 2065 Honestly, I could have told you that. You should have just asked me. <laughs> I mean, we learned this from Mewtwo way back in the day. <laughs> I mean, even I know what happened to Mewtwo, and I, I don't even know anything about Pokemon. <laughs> AD, the first combat ready gear is completed. That... At this point, gear science has progressed significantly. God. While a gear is not a species though. in and Dang. of itself, many variant classes can be created depending on the species used as a source for the gear conversion process. These variations would be classified years later into types such as regular, toxic, flying, large, and more. Of note are city-sized gears, categorized as Megadeth class. I'd mm. classified as and more. 
<laughs> Mega death class. What even is that oh, supposed look, it's to a puppy, be? Though. It's supposed to, it's a puppy, <laughs> but also it's inside of the mouth of a bigger thing. What? Mm. Oh my god! Which are capable of mass eradication of large populations. A defining trait of gears created based on animal DNA is that they continue to display sentience and in rare instances, sapience as well. Their behavior is animalistic and instinct-driven. In accordance with the intended design, they do not possess their own individual wills or long lifespans. Mass production of militarized gears begins. Shipments are deployed to the nation's allies worldwide. Due to espionage Why? and stolen data, other nations eventually begin producing their own gears as well. During this, this production process, war. however, numerous research facilities are sabotaged and destroyed by an unknown assailant. Authorities were I mean, like, yeah, we we make weapons of mass destruction in the hopes that we can all be at peace. That's totally why. <laughs> uh, well, at least Sol is trying his best to keep things under wraps, but you... We know how this Refer goes. to the perpetrator of these attacks as yeah. bad guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he's called bad guy? He ruined my science project. He's a bad guy. <laughs> right there in my report. <laughs> Some years later, Frederick discovers that man's imminent design plans. He begins recovering information on the Saint Oratorio project and uses it to create an anti-gear weapon known as the Outrage. It functions as a magic amplifier with no <laughs> predetermined limits on the output of generated mana, potentially leading to global catastrophe if not regulated properly. Due to the danger of this power Lovely. and the difficulty in handling it himself, Frederick subdivides the weapon into eight components for safety and that's his sword. the creation of this weapon necessary to preemptively prepare for the imminent creation this giant of lighter. the first perfect gear. The culmination of that man's research and creations is complete. Command Class Gear 01, capable of injecting her programming into all other gear lifeforms and replacing their lack of will with her own. The power to control all gears, the US government names it Justice. Upon activation, justice. for unfair reasons, <laughs> Justice loses control and annihilates the entire island nation of Japan. On suspicions oh. of his involvement- Rest in peace, oh. Japan in the catastrophe, yeah. that man is deemed a war criminal. Clearly designated as a threat to the planet, it is determined that Justice must be destroyed. Justice defends herself by rebelliously taking control of all gears and declaring they war wanted on a weapon, And then when the weapon goes crazy, they're like, it's your fault! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's zombie day. laughs> this reminds me of the, the giant robots, the, the villain in the Incredibles movie he <laughs> made. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, I made a super high-tech AI that learns how to defeat its opponents. But wait, it learned how to defeat me? Impossible! <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Thus begins the Hundred Year War, known as the Crusades. The Sacred Order of Holy Knights is founded by the UN as a force representing no country fighting for all humanity. War is declared on all gears. For the next century, most records of world- <sighs> How many stories do we have of humanity creating its own downfall? Like all of them? <laughs> <laughs> like if we had just left things alone, you know, maybe we'd be fine. But no, we just had to mass produce all these gears for the sake of peace history and events are lost to war. Though it isn't known how, the Order comes into possession of the Outrage components. Each is henceforth referred to as the Eight Sacred Treasures. The Fire Seal Sword, the Thunder Seal Sword, the Zesen oh. Wind Fans, the Flashing oh. Fan, the Dominator, Baikal, an unnamed dagger in Slayer's possession, and an unknown Eighth component. Huh. A secretive Very government organization weapons. that will eventually be known as the Post-War <laughs> Administration Bureau is created as a deterrent against criminal activity. They are responsible for creating an international bounty hunting system and work alongside the like IPF the and less publicly, the Assassin's Guild. <laughs> Though records of what took place during the Crusades are lost, the names of some notable individuals are known. 2093 AD, Cliff Underzen is born in Switzerland. At a young age, He's nearly killed by a gear, but is saved by a mysterious stranger. From that day, he's inspired to do the same for others, and joins the ranks of the Holy Order. Through distinguished service, he earns the position of commander. 
2128 okay. Good job, Cliff. A Megadeth class gear, Hydra, <laughs> destroys London. Cliff single handedly fights the Megadeth for seven consecutive days and nights with his. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> of course, it's got to be seven days and seven nights. He fought. Sword the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> he cuts off three of its heads and defeats it long enough for the Order's reinforcements to arrive and seal it away. Years later, a of village seven is days? built atop its dormant body. 2127 <laughs> AD. Cliff eventually adopts a son and names him Testament. Despite being a. <gasps> what? Okay. <laughs> kind-hearted pacifist, Testament joins the order against Cliff's wishes in hopes of one day becoming a knight worthy of succeeding his father. During an undisclosed mission, mm -hmm. Testament is reported killed in action. Though his body is never officially found, mm. it is later learned that the post-war administration yeah, bureau obtained the- Yeah. <laughs> that, at least I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> they should have known, right? Like, they didn't find the body, so that means that he's not dead. It wasn't shown on camera. <laughs> the remains and subjected them yeah. to a number of experiments, including an unknown gear conversion and revival process. Upon awakening, Look as a them. means of testing combat ability, he is forced to kill former Sacred Order allies. Shortly after this, like all other gears, his mind is dominated by justice. Damn. 2140 <laughs> AD. Cliff is forced to fight the gear that was once his son and mortally wounds him. Cliff has a very big sword. No wonder why it's called the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> it, it's, it's not a sword, it looks like a giant knife, honestly. I was gonna say, it looks like a giant kitchen knife. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed. Oh. He then forces the Post War <laughs> Administration Bureau to shut down all gear experimentation. Of course, he's buff anime so. grandpa. After attempts to use yeah. gears against each other ends in disaster, the Post-War Administration Bureau researches alternative anti-gear weaponry using the six forbidden magics. Finally. This results in the creation of six parasitic bioweapons known mm -hmm. as the Forbidden Beasts. Gears are noted to strangely <laughs> respond to them as instinctual enemies, while generally effective in suppression. The unsustainable nature of these- <gasps> Wait, a hair organism? Does that mean Milia has that and that's why her hair does all that cool shit? That it does? I'm sure it's completely unrelated. Yeah, totally. <laughs> she just uses a particular shampoo that gives her those powers. Bioweapons requires yeah. their hosts to not only sacrifice something great to incubate and there's a shadow the beast, but eventually <laughs> sacrifice themselves to the mm -hmm. beasts, ultimately, like once they awaken. Yeah. During the war, Cliff fights Justice 16 times to a standstill. Neither one is able to defeat the other. Damn. Why is, why is Cliff so badass? This guy's literally the main character. <laughs> 2162 AD. A mother is killed in a gear attack on France, leaving behind a boy named Kai Kiski. Months later, during another gear attack, Cliff and his young partner Tyr find Kai wandering the battlefield as a lone war orphan, surviving on instinct. Cliff asks what a child is doing in a place like this. Kai replies that his parents are dead and that he wants to fight instead of running away. He had been wandering alone for nearly six months. Cliff gives Kai an imperative. Survive the next five years, then return to him if he still wishes to fight. <laughs> okay. Damn. Kai Kisk joins the Sacred Order of and he, yep. By age 14, He's Kai has quickly become a prodigy swordsman and displays mastery Damn. of lightning magic. By age 50, he is promoted to the rank of captain and has earned the respect and admiration of his fellow knights. Sometime later, a mission goes wrong and an entire platoon is killed by a gear, save for Kai. Traumatized and racked by survivor's guilt, he etches the word hope into his buckle to rem <laughs> <laughs> So that's why he has hope on, even on his uh, super. Oh. Yeah. He is the bringer of hope. <laughs> Mind himself that nothing in this world can be done the true without him. Shonen protagonist. 2168 AD. Slayer retires from the oh Assassin's Guild in disgust as it no longer upholds his founding principles. Rumors. Honestly, Slayer is just winning. <laughs> He's just been here. Yeah.
Yeah. Friend of an unknown lone wolf yeah. bounty hunter, out in the battlefield, destroying oh. gears ruthlessly on his own. Slayer uh. eventually meets this bounty hunter and finds himself impressed by the passion burning like a sun in his path. Slayer <laughs> like decides to give him the nickname Saul. Brash, <laughs> unrefined, and antisocial. Saul's reputation for destroying <laughs> gears on mass precedes him. Cliff recognizes this as the man who saved him in his childhood and spares no expense traveling. Oh, ah, okay, that makes sense. I was like, mysterious man? Would it be that mm. man? No, no, it's the other <laughs> mysterious man. Backing <laughs> him down Bad to recruit him so to the Holy Order. <laughs> as Saul appears to only be interested in destroying gears, he accepts. 2172 AD, Order Saul joins the Sacred Order of Holy Knights. Despite joining, he often disobeys the chain of command, preferring to do things his own way. Fellow Knights treat him with no more him, I'm than ill will. Damn. Despite initially being impressed seeing Kai in action the first time, their clashing personalities <laughs> and ideals just aren't compatible. In a symbolic rebellion against Kai... This is almost like a, a Guts and Griffith thing. But uh, <laughs> not oh, going no. in that direction, thankfully. <laughs> I don't even, I haven't read Berserk yet, but even I know it does. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> like, you know, it's a very similar-ish relationship, but no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and his rigid orders, Saul etches the word free into his buckle. Other knights, inspired by this, and Kai's hope, begin following suit with their own words. One such example is the word pride etched into the buckle oh. of the young knight, Leo Whitefang. That's uh. 2173 AD. So, I like that. It's what's driving them. Yeah, yeah. Kai challenges Saul to a duel. Saul accepts. <laughs> During the duel, it becomes clear to Sol that Kai is Sol holding is back, to fighting Sol as if he were human. Kai loses. Thinking that he did not take the fight seriously, Sol is insulted. 2173 AD, the Battle of Rome. In response to a distress signal, Kai commands a fleet of airships on a rescue mission to the blitzed city of Rome, currently under siege by a massive army of gears. Overrun, the knights call for retreat, but Kai remains steadfast, knowing that there's more survivors that can be saved. Sol arrives just in time to save Kai from succumbing to his fate. After their retreat, Sol encounters Justice alone and is soundly Ooh. defeated. Amused by this reckless human, however, Justice spares his life. Realizing his weakness, Sol decides to steal the fire seal and quit the order. Kai attempts to stop him in the act, but is beaten again. Before he leaves, Cliff confronts Sol, but sends him off with a blessing, saying that he intended to give Sol the sword anyway. Cliff then mm. tells Kai to keep this incident a secret, and decides to entrust the future to these two. Thinking of them, and confronting guilt over the child soldiers that have been used in this war, Cliff decides to step down from his position, giving 16-year-old Kai Kiss leadership of the Order and the Thunder Seal. <laughs> I see. I regret bringing these children into war. So now here, child, <laughs> take my position as leader. As I peace yes. out. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. What a mad lad. Absolute legend, that guy. 2175 yeah. The final battle. The 17th and final battle between Cliff Underson and Justice begins. But this time, with the help of successor Kai Kisk and the Thunder Seed, they're able to drive her back. A weakened Justice retreats, but before she can escape, Soul Bad Guy appears before her again, oh. now wielding the Fire Seal. As they fight, Justice realizes that the man standing before her is a gear and attempts to control him. It fails. In rage, she calls him a traitorous flame of corruption. Sol unleashes said flames, incapacitating her long enough for the remaining knights of the Holy Order to flank and use a post-war administration bureau developed sealing spell to lock her in a dimensional prison. Without a command gear, the remaining gear army goes completely dormant immediately. The Crusades are over. Awesome. Just lock her in our pocket dimension. AD, the post-Holy War era. <laughs> Global damage has left the post-Crusade world like almost entirely a like, yeah, we'll do one later. <laughs> <laughs> Just swept that under the rug real quick. Recognizable. <laughs> Various areas have become stateless no-man's land. The remains of the EU and Russia consolidate to form the United Kingdom of Illyria. The country that was originally the source of all gear production is decimated. 
There are survivors, but most cities are in complete ruins. What government mm. exists is heavily in the pocket of the Assassin's Guild, which has risen to political aspirations and Dang. is also in possession of a number of forbidden beasts. All remaining destroyed or stateless areas are placed under jurisdiction of the UN's International Police Force, with the exception of South Africa. At this point, the post-war administration bureau is officially deployed to undo as much global damage as possible. The surviving Japanese people are placed into colonies, protected by magic barriers and guarded by the IPF, with a no-entry, no-exit policy. The Sacred Order of Holy Knights is disbanded. Kai, unable to adjust to normal life, joins the IPF. Cliff retires. <laughs> I like how in this video and the other video that we watched, they made it a point that Kai could not adjust to normal life. He was too much of a main character. He couldn't just live out his days peacefully. Leaving Holy Order days behind him for good. He does not stop martial arts training, however, and eventually becomes the first non-Japanese person to use and master key magic. Ooh. 2180 AD. The Missing Link. Five years after the Crusades, a rumor starts Gosh. going around the population. Justice will return. World leaders determined this to be a credible threat, evidenced by the unexpected erosion of the walls within Justice's dimensional yeah, no prison. Kidding. With great concern, the UN <laughs> announces the second Sacred Order yeah, selection tournament. An event I mean, like, we already knew that the solution was temporary. We just put her in our pocket dimension. Like, she's gonna break out eventually, mm -hmm. considering how powerful she is, so. And to find the most capable recruits <laughs> for the second sacred order of holy knights. Those that will stand ready should justice ever return. There Fighting are strange tournament. rules to the tournament, however. Incarcerated criminals and even children are permitted entry. Bloodshed was allowed, <laughs> but strange- <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll just let the children in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they could be extremely powerful, you never know. Just of all was the champion's prize. A single wish, any wish at all. Oh the tournament God. begins. Many of the strongest fighters of the post-war era are attracted to the event, each in search of their own truths. Dr. Baldhead. When a little girl- <laughs> I feel sorry for you, unless if you named yourself, then I, I respect you. You know who you are. Yeah, I like, I'm just looking at the side where it says bald head, <laughs> and it's in the SpongeBob meme, but before the SpongeBob meme even existed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he made it to the other games, did he? <laughs> Girl dies on his operating table, a disgraced doc. Don't tell me it's actually Faust. <laughs> from China, snaps and becomes a serial killer. However, once he learns that the patient was killed in a conspiracy to steal his research into resurrection healing, he takes on a new identity. <laughs> I see. So that's what un is, is underneath that bag. It's just He's a bald, bald head. <laughs> <laughs> to save as many lives as possible. May. A secretly Japanese sky pirate and her crew secretly are Japanese? Her jail <laughs> A secretly Japanese. I'm pretty sure everybody knows. <laughs> it's pretty open, but you know. <laughs> Johnny Sporty. They soar the skies in Mayship, a stolen black tech airship from Zap. The template. A powerful oh. slave. Oh, wait a minute. This is Potemkin before he became Robo. Unless if he's not Robo and that's just a mask. Warrior of Zep is freed by his sergeant. Even Gabriel. bigger. Together, they successfully rise up and overthrow the oppressive noble and class arms. in full revolt, bringing democracy to Zep. Democracy! Zana, an American oh. war orphan and dealer for the Assassin's Guild. When his drug dealing turned to drug abuse, the guild sends a ninja, Damn. Tsuyoshi, to kill the boy. Unable to do so, Tsuyoshi, actually a double agent for the IPF, trains Chip to escape his demons 
by turning to the way of the ninja. When his master is in turn assassinated by the guild for betrayal, Chip is nearly consumed by his desire for revenge, but finds solace in the teachings that saved his life. This is a very ninja backstory. <laughs> it's extremely familiar <laughs> rage. From Russia, a trained assassin from childhood, found and forced to wield the forbidden beast Angra. After escaping yeah. from an abusive relationship with Zato One and deserting the guild what? that forced this life upon her. She <laughs> abusive relationship with Zato? How dare you, Zato? Damn. <laughs> determined to destroy both, but is wounded during her fight with Zato. Zato One loses control of his power and escapes. Zato One from Spain. The new ruthless leader of the Assassin's Guild strays from Slayer's original Assassin's Code in favor of money, political influence, and manipulation. Responsible mm. for the death of Dr. Baldhead's patient, he sacrificed his sight oh. for the forbidden beast Eddie, who has now consumed him whole. Axel Lowe. I see. Okay. I wonder if Foss knows. Probably not. And like, Slayer created. Yeah, that Zato was the one who did this, and it was kind of his entire motivation now to save as many people as possible. But, uh, mm -hmm. I also feel like it's kind of irresponsible of Slayer to be like, uh, the guild's not really what I envisioned it to be anymore. I'm a peace out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Maybe you said it straight if it's not what you wanted it to be. But, you know, yeah. maybe there was a uh, you know, more nuance to the situation. <laughs> it's like you're a rambunctious, rambunctious child, and you're like, meh, they can go do what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving it to Zato? I don't think that was such a great idea. <laughs> An English pacifist born in the 20th century that suddenly finds himself slipping through time from 1998 to 2178. Wait, are you <laughs> telling me it's actually... <laughs> Is that actually Axel? <laughs> oh, he's, he, okay, he's a time traveler and also a pacifist. Yes. For unclear reasons, forced to leave his girlfriend behind, Axel searches for a way no. home and has no idea where his next time slip will lead. No! So Axel's entire story is he's trying to go back in time to go be with his girlfriend? Oh. Viking. A Japanese... Viken got upgrades over the years. <laughs> Massive <laughs> upgrades. If this is the first version of Viken. Swordswoman raised what in the colony. She lost an arm she still and an eye and both parents to a gear attack. Yeah, she I I think she does. She does, yeah. It just looks different. It's just more Yeah, it's more less clearer, obvious with her yeah. hair still. At a young age, <laughs> but remembers the image of that man surrounded by flames and his gear creations on that night. From that day, she sought vengeance. Though she does not enter the tournament, she uncovers the truth about it and is currently wanted for escaping from the colonies. Mm. Soul Bad Guy burns his way through all the competition to the finals, where it is revealed that the entire tournament is a lie orchestrated by Testament, Cliff's adopted son. Somehow, he is survived by an unseen hand. Unlike most mindless dormant gears, Testament recovered his memories after confronting his father, oh. but his mind was still under her influence. He needed one final sacrifice of the strongest warrior in order to break the seal and reawaken justice into this world once again. Oh, God. Soul defeats him, but in his defeat, Testament realizes that he may still serve her in the end by using his own blood as a sacrifice to open the dimensional prison. Justice is once again no, in the Damn it, Testament. Soul and Justice fight. <laughs> That's okay, they're still, they're still my best bean. During the battle, <laughs> the Soul's headband is ripped off, revealing a magical seal on his forehead that is identical to the one shared by all gears. Justice, seeing this, is perplexed as she once again is unable to control his mind. Soul <laughs> reveals that the reason he cannot be controlled is because even though Justice is a Type 01 Command Class gear, he is the prototype gear that all others were based on. He was Frederick Bolsara. With a massive explosion, Justice is defeated, leaving nothing but a shell behind. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm gonna assume that even though he was the prototype, he doesn't have any capabilities to command any of the other gears that was specifically made for Justice. But since he was made before Justice was made, then yeah, okay, I get it. He's I like, mean, he, he wasn't like a completed perfect gear either. Mm, oh yeah, yeah, true. It's because the other gears were made after they started the research up again a few years later. 
after shutting it down initially. Because mm -hmm. so, it created justice as the first perfect gear. Yeah, okay, okay. With her dying words, Justice says that she wishes the three of us could talk again one last <clears throat> time. Realizing that Justice is connected to his past, Soul Bad Guy swears that he's going to kill that man. Betrayer of his own kind and slayer of his own kin. Soul Bad Guy is the guilty gear. <laughs> Dang! So that's why it's called Guilty Gear. He's a gear, and he feels guilty. It all makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yes. It all makes sense now. <laughs> Perfect sign off to the video. But honestly, mm -hmm. that was really good. I I enjoyed that. The, was so good. Yeah, the slower pace and then the slow reveals as to the characters and mm -hmm. all of their motivations. And we can see it building yes. up upon each other, and like as we know the the story and strive, you can already see yeah. like where those plot lines start and where they currently like knowing are. Knowing the big beats, mm -hmm. you're able to piece together all these little ones into the bigger picture. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah, and, and I mean it's also good to see a lot more of the side characters that we hadn't touched upon at all. Like you know, they might mm -hmm. not be integral to the main story as a whole, but just their dynamic. Yeah makes him the universe more interesting like man like mm -hmm. axel man he just wants to be with his gf <laughs> man <laughs> yeah. stupid time slips he just got <laughs> arbitrarily <laughs> fucked <laughs> oh but all right yeah awesome once again make sure to go mm -hmm. support the og link at the top of the description of thank course, you guys yeah. so much for watching hope you enjoyed and we'll mm -hmm. catch you in the next one later dudes Bye bye